Mr. Burke just assigned a six-page research paper, due in three weeks. He warns the class not to procrastinate, because this is not the kind of thing you can write the night before and expect to earn a good grade. So that's why Sophia is starting to work on her final draft right away. But almost as soon as she starts working, she runs out of motivation. She doesn't know what to write for her intro paragraph because, well, she has no idea what points she'll be making in the rest of the paper. She's pretty frustrated, so she grabs her phone to text her friend Nicole to see how she's doing with writing the paper. However, taking in bite-sized updates from our messages and social media apps, like the picture from your crush's beach trip, or the ad for the phone you've been wanting, or the headline about the latest celebrity scandal, steals the energy our brains need to focus on more important things. Because even after we stop looking at it, we continue processing what the information means to us and how, or if, we'll use it. So when we struggle to make progress, we feel the need to relieve the frustration again, and we give in to the urge of doing the easy thing, getting the instant gratification of looking at our phones for updates. Expensive smartwatches, fancy planners, and even energy drinks are promoted as the secrets to being more productive. But here's what actually works best, being able to get in the zone and recognize the most important task at any given moment, and pay attention to it long enough to make progress. Making a better to-do list is a habit that can help Sophia strengthen her attention so she's more productive. Whenever she has the cue of feeling overwhelmed by a big project, she can break it down into manageable steps before she does anything else. The first step is to write down her end goal at the top of the paper, and then beneath it list the smaller tasks she needs to complete along the way, like researching and note-taking, outlining, writing a rough draft, seeing Mr. Burke for help, and doing the final draft. Giving herself due dates staggered along the way will prevent the stress of trying to do all the tasks right before the whole paper is due. It satisfies our brains to complete tasks, even small ones. Every little thing we contribute to a bigger goal motivates us, because with each step, achieving the goal feels more within reach. Another way Sophia can strengthen her attention is changing how she takes her breaks. As it stands now, whenever she has the cue of feeling frustrated by an assignment, she immediately takes a break to check her phone. This gives her the satisfaction of getting updates on the outside world and avoiding the assignment that's frustrating her. But there are the negative side effects. She continues to be distracted, which wastes time and gets in the way of her ideas. To improve the habit, Sophia can plan in advance when she'll take her breaks and also slow down the first part of her habit loop. To plan, she can write down the start time of her work session at the top of the paper and the end time at the bottom. Then, in between those times, she'll write the time she plans to take her breaks. A three to five minute break after working for 25 minutes is a common time frame. Realistically, as Sophia works, she'll probably have the cue of feeling frustrated with her assignment. But she's going to slow her habit loop down. She'll wait until her scheduled break times to check her phone. No doubt, it'll be a little tough to get used to. But when she gets to her scheduled break times, she'll still get the satisfaction of getting updated. Taking fewer breaks will reduce the negative side effects, but not totally eliminate them. If Sophia's really serious about getting the assignment done soon, instead of looking at her phone on her break, she'll do something like stretch or grab a snack, which wouldn't have the negative side effects caused by lingering distractions. Sophia's training herself to delay gratification. In other words, she's doing what's important before what's fun, and that's not easy at first. But toughing out a little discomfort in our minds or bodies usually builds the endurance we need to achieve our goals. In other words, no pain, no gain. Okay, here are two bonus tips to help you be more productive. If you really struggle to stay focused, consider using an app that prevents you from being distracted by, well, apps. Before you start working, select the apps you want to block your access to and set the timer for how long you want to work. Also, facing a messy space has been shown to increase stress hormones for some people. Stress makes it harder to think clearly, which makes it hard to get work done. So keeping your workspace, backpack, and folders clutter-free and organized can help you be more productive. All right, it's pep talk time. Let's be clear. The point of creating habits that make you more productive isn't to become a workaholic. Instead, it's about strengthening your attention so you're more efficient. 
you get more worry-free free time, which makes your life balanced. In the next HabitWise video, we're moving on to another important area of life, money management. We'll cover the way advertising gimmicks affect how we think, which has a big effect on how we spend our money.